So I've just uh, heard of the passing of Nikki Hayden, and uh, having been a big Nikki Hayden fan for a long time, I wanted to share a uh, memory that I had of him, and I thought uh, I could at least get through the beginning of this before I started tearing up. Uh, I've met Nikki on a few occasions, and uh, about a year and a half ago, I had the privilege of uh, getting to ride on a track with uh, Nikki Hayden, which was uh, something that I never thought I'd ever be able to do. I was a huge fan of his back in the AMA days. Um, I followed him to MotoGP, and was a huge fan of him long before I ever got into automotive journalism. So the idea that I ever had the opportunity to ride with him was, was unbelievable, but that's exactly the opportunity I had about, uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, Honda offered to pull out of the museum uh, an RC45, which was the, the first superbike that Nicky Hayden rode in competition. Uh, and they also brought to the track uh, a then new CBR 1000, which was the bike that Nicky Hayden was going to World Superbike uh, to ride over there. This was uh, as he was making the transition from MotoGP to, uh, to World Superbike. So uh, the Honda brought both those bikes out to the track, and uh, I showed up nervous as could be, and uh, got to meet Nicky Hayden, who was immediately one of the friendliest guys I'd ever met. Uh, it was unbelievable. I'd, I'd met him before briefly, but uh, never had the chance to actually have a conversation with him. Um, so he immediately went out on uh, the CBR, the new one, and uh, that left the RC45. The idea was we were both going to ride both bikes, and I was going to talk to him about uh, his his history, uh, how he came up through World Superbikes, and uh, and everything that he'd ridden along the way. Uh, and I was going to ride both bikes, and he was going to ride both bikes, and we are going to talk about how the Honda Superbike basically had evolved over over the 10 years or so between those two bikes. And uh, so Nicky goes out on the CBR, and immediately he's just flying around the track, as you'd expect, popping wheelies all over the place, uh, and putting a big grin on the smile of everybody who was there. And so it was my, uh, my turn to go out on the RC45. And this was a bike, again, that had come out of the museum, and uh, had just had some tires put on that had been in storage for a while, so uh, the Honda rep there warned me that these tires were a little bit old, and, uh, and that I needed to take it easy. And so I'm thinking... I'm going to go out, I'm going to have a real slow out lap, I'm going to take it easy, I'm going to do a couple laps around this track that I had never been to before, uh, and take it easy. And uh, so I throw my leg over the bike, I head out on cold tires, and uh, I turn left to go down the pit lane, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm on my ass. Uh, I'm lying on my back, and this RC45 that had come out of the museum was sliding away from me down the asphalt, and, uh, and I wanted to die. Um, I... Uh, Um, lying there on my back, that was the uh, probably the lowest moment in my professional career at that point. I had basically dropped the bike, I hadn't made it 20 feet from, uh, from the garage, which was humiliating, of course. You know, I've ridden many motorcycles, gone very fast in many motorcycles at many tracks, but this bike, the second I leaned over a little bit, it just slipped out from under me and I was on my back. And I was mortified. You know, here's this man who I've looked up to for many years, uh, this, this person who I was a huge fan of, and he was still tearing around, and he was about to come in and see that I had dropped this bike uh, that was part of his history and part of, um, you know, part of this whole segment we were trying to put together. And I hadn't even made it 20 feet. So uh, we rolled the bike back into the pits. Uh, the peg had broken off, the fairing was scraped up, and it was pretty clear that the bike wasn't going to go anywhere after that. And so I'm thinking to myself, I just screwed up this segment. Uh, Nikki Hayden, who probably doesn't get many days off, who had graciously agreed to spend one of those days at the track with us for the segment, uh, now isn't going to get to ride both bikes as, as uh, we hoped he would. And, and ultimately, I've just wasted a lot of his time and my time and everybody else's time who was there. So uh, Nikki pulls in, um, talks to the crew a little bit about the CBR, wanders over and sees me standing sheepishly in the corner and looks at the bike and sees that uh, that something has gone wrong and I tell him what happened and uh, and he takes a moment and I'm expecting him to just either storm off or lay into me um, but uh, but uh, instead of that he starts telling me stories of all the bikes that he has crashed over the years and uh, he tells me of all the times that he's been testing, all the times when, you know, the pressure was high, 
And when he screwed up and when he dropped bikes, when he crashed bikes and wrecked bikes, and basically was just trying to let me know that uh, this shit happens effectively. And uh, he wasn't mad. He was very understanding. Uh, despite the fact that the bike only had one peg, he said he was still willing to go out and ride the thing all around if, uh, if he needed to for, um, for the purpose of the segment. And uh, after that, he, uh, he walked, walked me out of the garage and, and followed the path. He wanted to see where the bike had gone down. And he pointed at the asphalt and he said, um, that, line, that line shouldn't be there. And there was basically a line on, on the asphalt. It looked like a, a, a wet line, basically. And that was what I think was release compound off of that rear tire. And Nicky said, there shouldn't be that much off of this tire. And we went back over the bike and we looked at the bike. And sure enough, the, the rear tire on that bike was was wet. It was slick. Um, you could, you know, slide your finger along it and it felt like Vaseline was on the tire. He said, it shouldn't, it shouldn't feel like that. And he said, Tim, this wasn't your fault. Um, he was, uh, <laughs> he was very gracious about the whole thing. Um, stayed around, did lap after lap after lap at uh, ridiculous speeds, pulled all the wheelies uh, that, uh, that my, my video producer, Mark Ganley, at the time, uh, that he wanted to see, basically did everything that we needed to, to make sure that we still got uh, a pretty great video out of this, despite the fact that um, I almost ruined the whole damn thing. Uh, so Nikki was um, just an incredibly nice guy, uh, beyond, the, uh, beyond the talent, beyond everything else, he was... Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Nikki Hayden was a hell of a class act, um, and uh, my deepest condolences to his family, to his to his fiance, and uh, to all the other Nikki Hayden fans out there. Uh, I won't say rest in peace because I don't think that's what he would want. Uh, but I hope that wherever he is now, that uh, Eddie's having a hell of a good time. And uh, I know I'll never forget that time.